welcome back once again to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. A big shout out to today's guest. Before we even begin, I'll let you into a little secret. We had a bit of a nightmare. I had to cancel and then we rearranged and I put the wrong time zone down. We missed each other. So today is third time looking. His name is Nathaniel Morris. He's the founder of EQ Digital, which is a business strategy organisation that is helping retail executives and senior tech leaders quickly create harmony between IT and business, all by transforming technical leaders into business owners, but without blowing the budget or timelines. And he's an absolute gentleman. He's incredibly He's been incredibly patient and gracious with me to ensure that we sit down and have this conversation. And today I want to learn more about transforming IT from the inside out, how he added 20% in business value without any new technology, which was something that stood out to me when I was doing a little research on him. And we'll also talk about some of the changes that he's seen throughout the last few years, such as how the role of CIO has changed but I don't want to reveal any spoilers. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Tennessee, where Nathaniel Morris is waiting to share his story. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. My name is Nathaniel Morris, and I'm with EQ Digital. And my background is in helping build technology teams and helping build technology leaders. I've been working in tech for about 20 years now across different types of teams in retail and software as a service organizations and have helped leaders come in and build their organization, or in some cases, if it's a new leader, rebuild their organization to deliver value for the business. And there's a lot of different industries there. So I'd love to take you back in time for a moment. Can you remember where your passion for technology came from or a moment that would ultimately put you on the path you're on today? Absolutely. Uh, I began working with computers um, back in actually probably about middle school, way back when we're talking uh, mid the monochromatic monitors and uh, dealing with Visual Basic. And I think the first set of code that I ever wrote uh, was to average five numbers, right? Way back. But I began working with those and I had an uncle who liked to work with computers, actually taught it in the public school sector. And I was constantly picking his brain. And then I went into a, a customer service role and began working with a team and I had somebody that I worked beside, and she was a technologist by trade, had uh, spent many years working on uh, old mainframes. And then she began to show me how we could automate and how we could make things better and not have to do the same thing a hundred times a day, but make it better. And that's probably the, the turning point of my career from that role. The next role that I had was in e-commerce and working with technology. And from there forward, my entire career has been centered on technical and technical leaders. Love that. And I can see how everything evolved over the years to lead you where you are. And that path would lead you to EQ Digital. And I'm conscious to be a few people listening, hearing about you guys for the first time. So can you tell me a little mm -hmm. bit more about the story behind that company and also some of the problems that it set out to solve with technology? The path to EQ Digital uh, happened just before the pandemic, and I actually uh, stepped out of my corporate job as an executive leading a large technical team. And that was about a week, two weeks before the world shut down. So uh, a little bit of a interesting timing. But when we began to look at the need in the industry, what I continued to find was that technical leaders didn't have the business background or the business didn't understand the technical landscape. And that disconnect was continuing to cost businesses money, time, uh, innovation, because there wasn't a, a shared camaraderie between the two. There wasn't a shared understanding between the two. And I had done that a number of times in my career. It was what I had been asked to do by a number of different leaders who had either worked with me in the past and said, hey, can you help fix my team? And so we stepped into that world of working with teams. And really, it boils down to at EQ Digital, we work with four areas, people, process, partners, and the product. And our goal is to create the alignment between business and IT in those four categories, making sure that the teams are executing at a high level. There's a foundational element of trust and culture that's established. 
making sure the processes are balanced, uh, ditch on both sides, as a mentor of mine used to say, you have to have process but too much process and you're going to slow the system down. So you have to create the right tension between the two and balance it. Uh, and then partnerships, how to appropriately partner as a technical uh, organization with the big boys in the field, if you will, the Cisco's and the Microsoft's and all of the vendors out there, and then making sure that the product is delivering for the business. So that's really what we're about is optimizing an organization and helping the business succeed. And you mentioned how much the world has changed there and how you were faced with that lockdown period as long as much as everyone has that's going to be listening to this podcast and also thought some of the things that you noticed that were lacking in leadership. And I'm curious, how have you seen the role of, let's say, the CIO change over the years? Absolutely. The, the role of CIO has changed so much in the last even probably 10 years. And of course, with the pandemic, uh, a lot of additional pressure has hit. The role used to be of very much centered on how do you keep the lights on? Technology has to be delivered for the business. How do we make sure it's there, it's working, it's installed, and just uptime? How do we make sure that the system doesn't go down? But the C-suite and the business uh, owners, the business users are really asking more out of technology these days. And it's shifted much more as a strategic partnership in the C-suite rather than just an operator. And I think if you look at some of the research that's coming out of the various organizations that are studying technology and studying the CIOs, they're saying the same thing consistently. The CIO job is about helping the business grow revenue, optimize cost, truly innovating. A number of businesses, if, if you see the survey data, 20% of businesses believe that half of their revenue will not exist in five years. And that's because of the technical disruption. That's because of the various disruptions that are happening in different marketplaces, whether it be in the medical field, retail, obviously with the digital retail. So they're worried about how their organization is going to succeed in five years. And they're looking for that technical leader to help them navigate that transition and that they will need new benefits and new ways of operating with revenue. And then of course, the other side is the risk. The risk previously, when we would go back five years or 10 years, you could defend a perimeter and keep your things secure. Now you're dealing with insider threats. You'll hear things like zero trust on the security side. And while a, a CISO is probably going to be owning the bulk of that, it is a partnership with the CISO, the CIO, and any CTO or digital officer, everyone is responsible for security and really thinking inside out from a security perspective and reducing the business risk, not just the technical risk, but truly the business risk is a big shift. So the CIO job has really transitioned over the last five years to a strategist and a business expert, not just a technical operator. And despite there being four, th four to 5,000 miles between us today as we have this conversation, one thing that we're probably both seeing right now is economic uncertainty and many businesses challenged with doing more with less. And at the same time, we've got customer expectations that are continuously rising. They're demanding more technologies, better digital experiences, et cetera. And while all this is happening, technology expenses are skyrocketing. So I've got to ask, it seems such a, a tricky balance to achieve, but how should businesses better manage these increasing costs? Yeah, the costs are going up absolutely on a very rapid pace. And one of the things that we've worked with clients on is when you get into a strategic alignment with your vendors, it's really, really important that you find your right partnerships. Um, some organizations will do competitive bidding across three or four partners on every single transaction. And so they might have a switch they're buying one day from one partner and six months later, they're buying from a di different partner or software from company A and then company B, and it's moving around a lot. It's really difficult to stay close if you're jumping around all over the place. So the goal is to say, find the partners that are going the same direction you are, that are aligned with your principles and dig deep. Those partnerships, if you will dig deep, are saving companies between 15 and 20% versus jumping it around all over the place. So really getting alignment 
and understanding who you're going to work with is a competitive advantage. The other thing that is there, and uh, a lot of CIOs are finding this, there's a lot of overlap because acquisition procurement is being done across the organization. You've heard things of shadow IT, you've heard things of uh, procurement where it's everybody can buy tech now with the swipe of a credit card. Really, it's coming down to getting an internal alignment around a planning first mindset so that you're avoiding the overlap, avoiding the unnecessary expense. Uh, I've seen organizations that are paying 30 and 40% premiums because four different parts of the organization are buying licenses and they're not consolidating and working collaboratively to make sure they're combining it to an enterprise contract and everybody's paying off the shelf rates. And that's where an internal planning first mindset is so important. And then the third thing I would say is technical pre- procurement mindset. Um, oftentimes technology procurement is involved with the corporate procurement that is perfectly appropriate, but if there's not technical skill and understanding of the bits and bytes of how it's done inside procurement, you're going to cost yourself. So whether it be your leadership team working with procurement more directly, uh, but it's not something you can just say, I handed it to procurement, they gave me the best price. If it's a technical product, you definitely want technical expertise. Too many components in the licensing regulations and the hardware components that you're dealing with. So when you're dealing with technical expenses, really aligning externally, aligning internally, and then getting that procurement understanding will save companies a lot of money. And although this is a tech podcast, I did read before you came on the podcast that you you added 20% in business value without new technology. Can I ask you, you share that story too? Sure, absolutely. Uh, one of the common misconceptions is we have to have new tech to get better. And while new tech will often make an improvement, there is a, out of the PMO Institute, uh, the PMP Institute, you find that they are telling us that technical teams are failing on projects at an alarming rate. Half of all technology projects are failing at a cost of a million dollars plus each project. And a lot of times when we walk into an organization, what we find is the tech that is there is actually good enough. It may not be cutting edge. It may not be the absolute best, but it is good enough for the business need. The challenge is how do you create the alignment where the processes are using that technology to the best of its capabilities. It's integrated well with the other tech that is there. And so we walked into a company that was a software company and began working with them. And what we immediately found was duplicate values, same solution, same problem was being fixed by five different solutions. And we walked into the processes that were very backwards. We wound up with companies or excuse me, teams that were trying to solve the same problem and they didn't know each other were working on the same problem. Um, One executive had asked team A and another executive had mentioned it to team B. And so they're absolutely working at uh, competing perspectives, didn't have the full story. And this was a technology team that was very large. And we began working through and saying, okay, let's work with the leadership team, let's create alignment. And we actually had a 20% impact on the business value. When I say business value, you're talking about reducing costs, improving sales, true business metrics. And we swung it by 20% inside of about 12 months through optimizing these areas. Yes, some of that is cost reduction where we removed excess. Other things were we delivered projects for their customers faster, which accelerated uh, cash impact because we got the teams aligned. So really, we didn't have to buy anything new. It was optimizing what already existed and they had the right tools. They just didn't know how to apply them properly. So a great opportunity in a lot of organizations to really, especially in today's economic climate, to optimize what is there. Uh, and it can create a massive impact for the business. And we've already mentioned the economic climate at the moment. So with all this in mind and everything we've covered, what would you say is the top IT priority for executives during this this moment of uncertainty? So the business executives are asking for, help me create value. 
help me enable new revenue streams, help me to leverage the data that we have from a customer perspective, whether it be in marketing or in uh, any type of business value function, help me create efficiencies in our operations, whether we're in manufacturing, whether we're in retail, how do we streamline, how do we make things better? So as technical leaders, really understanding and leading with value to the business, speaking of business metrics, in revenue, in tying the operations of technology to specific revenue categories, these costs align to this revenue stream, or on the other hand, helping create business efficiencies and saying, this investment is going to create this opportunity in the front line or in the manufacturing lanes to make sure we're creating value. Really, that's the focus right now. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of concern about business impact over the next five years from general disruption that's happening in the marketplace. So organizations that are thinking ahead are looking at how does our technology enable us strategically to create new business value. The other one is risk. Every business executive is concerned right now about risk. And immediately our mind goes to security and hackers, and that is a key component of risk. But the other risk that is there right now is compliance and staffing. The compliance world is changing significantly with all of the data compliance, privacy compliance. Uh, you've got legislation in multiple different areas in the States and in Europe that are changing how we manage privacy and customer data. And then the staffing side, are we going to be able to keep our team? How are we managing our team? So really looking at the risk and mitigating risk for the business is the top concerns between impact value and risk, those are the top two that I'm hearing from business executives right now. There is a lot of doom and gloom at the moment. We've seen enough of it on our news feed as we endlessly scroll down. Mm -hmm. So to finish on a, a more positive note, what makes you hopeful about the future and where we're heading? Good question, Neil. Um, I think the conversation that makes me really optimistic is the access to innovation. We're living in a world that is completely connected. You have all of the opportunity that is there and someone on any part of our globe can come up with a new idea and begin to access technology and systems. You can have a developer that can learn how to code. You've got new languages coming out. You've got new systems coming out. Uh, even the world of AI that is now open to the masses with a low barrier to entry. You know, 10 years ago, even, or 20 years ago, the challenge became I have an idea, but I have to get access to infrastructure and systems that were very expensive to take my idea forward. But the fact that now the cell phone that you hold in your hand is more powerful than what ran complete businesses 10 years ago or 15 years ago is extremely, extremely impactful to allow for innovation to accelerate. So we are seeing a massive innovation wave that is coming and I think will even grow larger as we go across the next 10 years. And that's going to mean improvements in medicine. That's going to mean improvements in solutions and systems. That's going to mean improvements in retail and interaction, in learning and education. Every part of our lives is going to be impacted by new technology that is still yet to be invented. And yeah, we can say, okay, there may be things in pilot, but the fact that you're now in a situation where the globe can participate is really exciting. So I'm hopeful about what is coming because innovation is accessible to everyone at this point. It really is. And I'd also love to find out more about what tech trends excite you or maybe something has caught your eye or, or just what's next for you. Is there any anything else you can leave us with today? Absolutely. The, the two things that are really exciting to me as I am sitting here and continuing to watch trends and they're not going to be specific tech but one of the things that i'm seeing inside of organizations is that leadership is becoming a discipline and really understanding that leadership is side by side with technical skills and growing leaders i'm seeing more of that happen and it's exciting because that means that it's making a better workplace for our technologists it's making for better cultures and that is creating new value into organizations and the marketplace. The other one that is really neat to see, and it's starting a little bit, you know, we, as technologists, we sometimes grab the shiny new object and we, we love to fixate on it. 
But really, a lot of times the success comes when we find out how to create it into a system and leverage it ongoing. And that's happening with transformation. There was a big buzz about digital transformation and how companies needed to transform digitally. And all of that was a big wave over the last several years. And they talk about how COVID accelerated digital transformations. But really what I'm seeing now that's exciting me is it's not about transformation as a destination. It's about transformation in our DNA. And as a business and as an organization, whether it's nonprofit or whatever, I use business very um, globally, but you're seeing teams that are really saying, I'm looking at how we continually transform, how we're constantly innovating because things are moving so fast these days. It's about managing change. It's not simply about, we were trying to go from location one to location two and we're done. It's about constant innovation, constant reinvention of yourselves and transformation really becoming part of the fabric, part of the DNA of the organization and part of the mindset of thinking is exciting to me because that means we will be embracing technology in a faster format and we're not stuck in the old mindset which took five and 10 years to innovate, but we'll now be measuring innovation in months rather than in years or perhaps decades. So that's really exciting to see the acceleration go. And to the question a moment ago, the innovation that's now accessible is going to be able to become mainstream faster because of this transformation that's built into our DNA now. Wow, exciting times ahead. And I cannot thank you enough for coming on here and sharing your insights and expertise. But before I do let you go, I'd love for you to leave everyone listening with one final gift. And that is a book that is important to you, inspired you, means something to you. It can be any reason at all. All I'm going to ask is, what book would you like to add to our Amazon wish list for everyone? Oh, that's a tough question. I have quite the library of recommendations I give and suggestions I give. But um I mean, I've got, you've got the ideal team player, you've got Phoenix project, you've got several different books and leadership. I think the one that probably was at a pivotal point for me, uh, was given to me by a, a leader that I was working with at the time. And the book is called it's your ship. Um, and it's by captain Abershoff and really the transformation there for me. Um, interestingly, uh, it's a book about a captain in the Navy and it was given to me by a West Point graduate. So there's a little bit of contradiction there. <laughs> but um, the the transformation for me was the understanding that it is not about someone else creating the impact for you. It is about you understanding and taking ownership of your own transformation, your own journey, and really being empowered and enabling teams to do that. The story with Captain Abershoff was taking a very performing ship and the team and the crew that's on it and turning it from the bottom of the metrics all the way to the best ship in the Navy. And the way that that happened was truly allowing the team to take ownership and allowing those ideas to come up and allowing everyone to be responsible for their own ship. It wasn't oh, this is the captain ship, it's, it's my ship. And that transformation journey of understanding that it's your life, it's your career, it's your team that you're working with and enabling each team member to take that mindset really was a pivotal point for me on the leadership journey. So highly recommend it. Uh, I come back to it from time to time and reread it just for going back through and the reminder. So it's a, it's a great book. Awesome. I'll get that added straight to our Amazon wish list. And for anyone listening, just wanting to find out more information about yourself, EQ Digital, where they can contact your team, etc. Where would you like to point to everyone listening? Absolutely. If you'd like to contact us, uh, there's eqdigital.com has all of our contact information there. And then I would really like for you to follow me on LinkedIn. I put out articles and information uh, on technology, business, leadership, and the combination. So follow us there and you'll get all the latest information. Fantastic. I'll add those links to the show notes so people can find you nice and easy. We covered so much today from transforming IT from the inside out to adding 20% in business value without new technology. But I think it was your personal origin story that brought all that to life too. So just thank you for sharing that with me today. 
Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. I've enjoyed the conversation. Nathaniel is an absolute gentleman, and I think it's his business-aware, technical focus, blended with a candid, can-do leadership style that has helped businesses save millions in annual expenses, but also building sustainable, high-performing teams and contributing to hundreds of millions to the bottom line. I applaud everything that he does. I'm a big fan of his, and we broke the curse today. Third time lucky we managed to sit down and share his story. So a big thank you to Nathaniel for coming on. If anything we talked about today resonated with you, I'd love to hear your story too. So any comments, feedback, or pictures to come on the show, techblogwriteroutlook.com. You can also just send me a quick question or comment to at Neil C. Hughes on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you hang out. I'm the easiest guy in the world to find. So let's keep this conversation going. Big thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Oh, 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 oh,